Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame and Cinnamon Sugar and this is the recap review for the second episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville which is entitled Mar Say It Ain't So as a play on Marso. Anyway, um, it's a continuation of the last time and you know, everybody is still at the couples retreat and they are really not feeling him, meaning the Whitlows. Like, they really kept coming for him. They tried to tell me, oh, we don't know what school he went to, his credentials. Like, they really kept coming for this man. I'm like, why are y'all going so hard just to say we got each other's back just to not listen to this man? If he would have been telling you, Tiffany, the entire time, Get that one woman a baby. She operated in all this chaos. She can do it. She been doing it for most of her life. Go ahead and give her a baby. Give her that baby right now. She would have been all ears. She would have been here for it. If he was saying everything, if if he was saying any of the things that they wanted him to say, they would be here for everything that he talked about. So anyway, it is what it is. So I guess this is the next morning and we see them uh, up and Marcel up here cooking, baking and eggs and all these other things and you know what I'm saying? Wanting to know what's going on. So now that <laughs> the Whitlows have been in the hot seat, he want to know how they feel about it. He over here talking about, oh, it wasn't too rough. It wasn't too bad. All this other stuff. And I'm like, child, it's the last for me. Okay, it's it's the last. But yeah, like everybody said, they don't never want to hear what they're talking about. And as much as Marceau does not want to deal with couples therapy, he's doing pretty well. I Y'all know how I hate even giving Marceau any type of do. But I gotta give him his due when it comes to this. He been sitting there. He been he been eating it. He been eating everything that the people be sending to him. Anything they been sending his way. It is what it is. Um, so Marceau came at him. Uh, 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 the husband. I don't know. I can't think of his name in this moment. But anyway, was talking to him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why he gonna say? What does it feel like to be professionally diagnosed as fake? I was like, wait. No, no. So, you know, because Marcel was like, y'all came hard in our relationship last year. Like, y'all did the most. It is what it is. And again, the next day, everybody was like, look, we ain't here for y'all. Y'all sitting up here not answering the questions. And I don't understand because whenever anybody giving y'all advice or talking to y'all and, and it correcting y'all and telling y'all what they see in, y'all are not receptive to it. Tiffany talking about she feel like any question that was thrown their way, they feel as though they were answering them just fine. It's just a mess. It's it's just a mess. But yeah, they feel like they don't understand why everybody attacking them and all this other stuff. And even Kimmy picked up on the fact that it seemed like they were on two different pages when it came to babies. Because when she was talking to Kimmy one-on-one, she talking about, oh, I don't understand. And he talking about, he don't think we need to have a baby. But while they here in front of everybody else, he trying to make it seem like, yeah, we've talked about it. We good. We talked about it. You know, if it happened, it happened. Like, no, no, no. It seemed like he was like, no, nah, I'm not here for this baby. We, I ain't even getting sex. I'm definitely not going to get no sex with a new baby coming to the picture. Like, what is we talking about? He he kind of trying to look forward to the fact that the kid is going to be out the house. But she over here in her feelings about it and working a lot. It's just too much. It's just too much going on. And some reason it's like you want to act differently because of the environment. Anyway, so we ended up seeing Melody meet up with Martell's mama. Now, she got sick and tired of her. And she felt like a lot of things had been said. She'd been talking sideways about her. And she said some things about her mom, but she was like, nah, you said a lot of hurtful things to me. So I'm not going to sit up here and continue to have dealings with you if I know that you are doing things that I don't agree with. When Melody ain't here for you, she will block you with, her, with the quickness. So she was just like, she was thrown off because the two of them used to be very close. And she was like, yeah, we were close. And she was like, you know, you said some things. They kept actually showing the throwbacks to what was being said and his mama was sitting up there talking about melody was acting lazy she felt like melody 
was having her son, working him to death, and she was just sitting back there lazy. And I'm saying to myself, but ma'am, she was getting pregnant back to back. Every time you looked up, she was pregnant. So what's she supposed to do at the house? And then y'all looking at her sideways once we see them on the TV and she didn't got pregnant and she's still trying to work throughout the pregnancy and do what she can with the pregnancy. Y'all want her to sit down. Which is it? One minute you want her to get up and do something because you feel like your son is being worked to death. But now y'all talking about both of them working too hard. And so she was like, yeah, I did say all that. I did feel that way. You know what I'm saying? And so she was like, but you basically were insinuating that I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, she had to address some things that had been said. And she straight up was like, wait a minute. She said, your son is a liar. The mama was like, um, she said, you've upheld Martel for a very long time and not made him take responsibility. Since day one, nothing but good to you and fair when it came to you y'all enjoy what y'all do don't text me back because i'm blocking you this is all what melody said to her um the end mother-in-law like when she's done she's done like she was like i ain't got time for it every time i look up you riding for your son when you know your son is dead wrong that's something i've never understood mainly about black mothers when they have trash excuses for sons now, um, Martel has had his moments where he wasn't trash, but I'm saying when your son is doing things and you know, in these moments he is trash, I don't be understanding why y'all be riding so hard. Now I understand that from what I've seen, he seemed like he had been handing money to his mama and he has already made statements as if he has taken care of his mom because his mama took good care of him. So she has benefited, which is why Miss Wanda act a fool the way she do. Because they have, they literally have for real been handing money to her. But that's neither here nor there. But anyway, um, they just wanted to talk to one another. And she was just like, look, I'm glad that you even came and sat with me after I blocked you. Because I wasn't sure if you were going to come. But I just needed you to understand that I was hurt back then. Whenever anything came at me in a way that I felt was toxic. And it wasn't going to be conducive to what I had going on. And it was negative. I'm not dealing with it. So I'm going to cut you off. So I blocked you. Straight up told her she was going to block her and everything. But, yeah, she was just like, girl, I don't know why you said the things you said. But uh, you cannot say that I'm lazy. Like, I can't believe you said that. Like, you really tried to come at me sideways trying to make it seem like I'm lazy. And I was just like, girl, it is what it is. So, anyway, she was like, look, it's a new day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unblock you. And, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, we can do some of the things we had done before because you are my children's grandmother. And she was like, well, you know, I'm here for it. Like, back in the day, she used to be like, hey, girl, let's go eat. And they would go ride out and eat, hang out together, have a really good time. And she was like, you know, I love you. You know what I'm saying? Even before you became my daughter-in-law, you were calling me Mama Hope. So I'm just like, hey, it is what it is. Things happen. Things change. So, yeah. Um, now back at the couples retreat. So now they're outside around like a little fire and they're talking and Tiffany is trying to explain to Dr. Francis that she felt some type of way because he had kind of been like kind of unearthing some things that she hadn't thought of in a long time. And so he had to explain to her, you must not understand how present the wounds are for you to be bothered the way that you were. Because in your mind, you're like, oh no, with this... You, you did these things, and it's like, no, 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 no. She's feeling somewhat triggered, if you will. And so, it's like, you know, how do you feel about the losses? Tisha started, you know, crying because of the friend that passed away. And so, we find out that Tiffany's husband um, experienced a situation with his father, which was that his father was there but he wasn't because he always had these events he was playing sports but his daddy would never be there his daddy would always choose work over him to spend time with his children and his family um and it's understandable that you need to provide but at the same time that's kind of what he's trying to convey to tiffany is that we understand that work has to happen but you have to understand what your priorities are and he felt some type of way about his father never showing up to any of his events any of the sporting events anything that was of um, importance to him or anything that made him happy he wasn't there like he even started crying so when he said it i was like you know what 
this is one of the reasons why whenever I hear about people who don't have present fathers, whether the father was in the home or not, that literally it's like you live at the house, but you're still not present. It always does something to me. I always feel some type of way. And I know that I have been blessed because I have had a present father. Now, my father worked a whole lot, but he was always present. He came home every single night and he made sure to do activities with us and he would be present at events. Y'all, um, I've talked about this a few times, but I don't know if I've gone into depth about it. I'm going to tell y'all about a situation that my dad was present for me for that I appreciated to this day. So I've had like awards banquets that my daddy would come to and all of that. But one thing, one of the things that has always stuck out in my mind that I will always remember is that I was really deep off into art, always deep off into art. So when I attended Booker T. Washington Magna High School, when I lived in Montgomery, Alabama, when I was in the ninth grade, I had this art teacher. Her name was Miss Glasgow. That woman was everything. But, um, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was that the school? Was I at BTW then? No, no, no. This is when I was in the 10th grade, I think. I think I was in the 10th grade when this happened. It was either the 9th or the 10th grade. Anyway, um, and I attended Lanier Senior High School. So, Miss Glasgow ended up doing an assignment. There was a regular school assignment that she had us do. And then while we were in the middle of doing our thing, because we could do it however we wanted to, we can incorporate paint, pastels, whatever. I chose to do chalk pastels, right? Every now and again, I would try to challenge myself because I was just used to drawing and that was it. And every now and again, I would incorporate color, but it would never be like everybody else's because I, I wish I could do Bob Ross painting type of stuff. I can't, I cannot do a tree to save my life. Like I still want to buy the stuff, but I don't want to support the raggedy people who took advantage of Bob Ross, but I digress. So anyway, with this particular assignment, she came around the room, you know, looking in on what we're doing and seeing if there was anything that she might want to encourage us to add to our pieces or whatever. And so it was a theme. And it was called Take Back the Night. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before, but it's about people who've, you know, had sexual uh, assaults, rapes, and all that stuff or whatever. And um, the event was coming up. And so come to find out, she wanted us to do it because all of the high schools and junior highs, and I don't remember if elementary was included, but they were going to have the teachers to select like five to 10 students' work from each school and submit it for them to then say, okay, we want this person's work. So whoever she deemed to have the greatest of the great or whatever, um, paintings, drawings, or whatever you decided to do for that assignment, she was going to choose you. I was one of the people that she chose. So I was like, okay, I didn't think nothing of it. So she ended up telling me like, hey, I'm going to submit your artwork because it was going to be displayed at an art gallery in Montgomery. So I was like, um, okay. So it escalated very quickly. And um, I kind of debated on telling my parents about it because I was invited to come to the art gallery where it was going to be displayed along with everybody else's. Like when I tell you there were so, there are so many schools in Montgomery, we are the capital city. Like we're, we're the capital of the state of Alabama. So it's a lot of schools there. So anyway, I eventually get to mine and I kind of can't believe it's in an art gallery and all this other stuff. And I'm looking at all the other, when I tell you everybody, there are so many people who are very, very, very talented. They came to a part of the night where they announced people who would be winning. And I'm looking like, huh? Like, I, I honestly didn't even know it was a situation like that. It was an award ceremony. And so they gave people first, second, third place and all this other stuff. Mine won. Mine. Mine won. So when they announced my name, like, I, I honestly didn't think nothing of it because, like I said, I saw the caliber of work that everybody else did. Mine won. When they said my name, I stopped breathing and I felt like I was having an out-of-body experience. And my daddy was right there like, oh, 
Blunda, you won. Da, 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 da. Hugged me and everything. Kissed me on the cheek. Y'all, I could not believe. I could not believe. They wanted me to say a few words and all that. Y'all, I was speechless. I could not. I couldn't. I was crying. I could not. But how did I win? Y'all, my design was chosen to be the design that they would use for anything that they were going to have dealing with that campaign for the course of one year. So for 365 days out of that particular year when mine won, they used it on t-shirts, tote bags, anything that had anything to do with tape bag tonight. And to this day, I always think about that moment and how my daddy was there. That was a very important moment for me because I really, y'all don't understand how much I was into art while growing up. They used to buy me art stuff for Christmas all the time. One year they bought me some watercolor stuff. Like I had an easel. I had all that crap, y'all. And I don't know how to paint. I was so happy. I'm talking about I had a bike and everything else. I was so happy about that. That water paint collection that they got me. Y'all do not understand. Y'all do not understand. I really was deep off into art. So the fact that they took interest in what I took interest in, like they were supportive of what I was interested in, it always did something for me. But yeah, I really do appreciate the fact that my father was present. Even though he worked a lot, he had priorities. And like I told y'all before, my daddy don't play when it come to us. My daddy would take off work. <laughs> he would come up there in the middle of the day when we had AB on a roll and on a roll and perfect attendance ceremonies and stuff. He would come up to the school. I would be shocked whenever my daddy would come to the school. He would come to various, like I said, various things that I was a part of um, that would happen during school hours and after school hours. And even on weekends when we weren't in school, we would walk around the house as a family, exercising. He would talk to us. Like, we would eat dinner together. Like, it was a whole thing. I'm sorry. I had to get into that. Because, like, that, that took me somewhere when Lewis, that's his name. I don't know. It's like my mind remembers his name when I want to. Whenever Lewis talked about that situation, it really did something to me in his tears. It made me hurt for him. In that moment because that is very sad that your daddy was there and you wanted him to be present but he was working all the time and you were not his main priority even though he did feel like working so that y'all can have food on the table and a roof over your head and running water and all of that he felt like that was basically what is what was facilitating your needs and not understanding that you being present as a father was all that he really wanted. Anyway, y'all, I'm sorry I went off on a tangent. I know y'all probably like, girl, this ain't about you. I'm not trying to make it about me. Y'all just don't understand. Like a lot of these shows I can relate so heavily to, or it, it always makes me remember what I am grateful for. So yeah, y'all. Anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. He's really as at his big age. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a read. I'm just saying, like, as old as he is. Like, I'm almost 40 years old and stuff like that. Certain things, it still triggered me or certain things, I still feel like the way I felt in that moment. So, I fully understand where he's coming from. So, yeah. Um, we just end up seeing the couples talking about everything they have going on. And I'm just not... It, it became very awkward when Letitia was talking about how she is submissive to her husband and how she does not have a problem with him being the lead and all this other stuff. It's just a lot. It, it was a lot. And Dr. Francis was just like, huh? And you could tell that Letitia was pretty much drowning. And in her mind, she's just like, I haven't experienced, you know, they played the playbacks of her talking about her, her husband, they cheat on her and all this. And it's just like over the last three years, that's when their ma their marriage started kind of becoming rocky because before that, they hadn't had any issues. So it's like basically when y'all got on this show and stuff started being revealed about you that you don't want to agree to because at first nobody was producing receipts on the cheating that you had been doing, which I believe he has been cheating. Like I told y'all before, I will say it until I am blue in the face. To me, when this show first came out, when the cheating and all that stuff started coming about coming out about Martel, I thought that Marceau was the main one I had thought in bopping. I would have never thought that Martel was out here like that. 
I mean, of course you can't put nothing past nobody, but I'm just saying. But it's a lot. But yeah. But she really over here like, oh, no, you just got to continue to trust the process. God gave me this man to be my husband. I'm like, girl, we're not finna go there because you do not want to hear what I have to say. Nobody will want to hear what I have to say. Anybody who wholeheartedly believes in marriage and all that, if you're agreeing with what she's saying, you're not going to want to hear what I, want, what I have to say, which is that he didn't necessarily give him you. You got pregnant and you decided, let's get married. This was one of those situations, if I'm not mistaken, that... You know what I'm saying? She had gotten pregnant. I forgot. Did she say she lost? I don't forgot, y'all. It's been a while. I'm trying to remember if when they initially got married. Did they? Did she have a miscarriage? I don't forgot. But anyway, if I'm not mistaken, she got pregnant and then they got married soon after that. It was one of those situations. Heavily. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's situations like that. A lot of these people, that's the reason why they got married. It's because a baby came about. But anyway, Dr. Francis is not here for them. It's what they talking about. And I'm just like, ooh, child, you better read. It just is what it is. Because you over here basically like, my marriage is the way it is. Or whatever, whatever. Child, we gonna fast forward on to the main thing that I have been wanting to get to this entire time. It's because they pretty much are having like a midnight snack or whatever. They doing something. And Dr. Francis was there. And Maurice was like, I just want to know. How much is too much sex and all this stuff when it comes to you being married to somebody? Because my wife don't believe in in all of that. I want I believe that we should be able to have sex once a day at least or a couple of times a day. And nobody should, you know, say no and all this other stuff. Oh, child, I just don't understand why it's not common sense that you should get with somebody who is willing to compromise or... If you do believe that this person really is meant for you, then you will get with the program and say, you know what? Let me find some other outlet while I go somewhere and calm down. Because if they're not on the same sexual level that you are on, then you need to go somewhere and sit down or just be for the streets or whatever. Because I just don't understand. But yeah, she is saying the exact same thing. That Dr. Francis is saying, which is, it's her body. She should be able to say whether or not she want to give it up. Like, you got to calm down. And she like, look, he don't understand what go into this. After we done went at it, he get to lay there and watch football or do whatever he want to do. While I got to get up and clean, cook, do all this other stuff. Back in the day when we might have been doing some things before we got married, I had, you know what I'm saying, a smaller house to maintain. Now we got this big house that has to be maintained. It's so many different things that got to go on. Even when I was just a single mom, it was just myself, my smaller home, and my child that I had to take care of. Now I got to take care of you, my son, your son, this house, and everything else that come along with it. And you have a mindset of if you are a man, a man is not supposed to help with what is deemed to be womanly duties. Like cooking and cleaning and all this other stuff. So you expect me to do all this heavy lifting and all of y'all men are up in here and you think that I'm just supposed to do it all? If that's the case, then you're not finna get what you want out of this situation. He ain't believing in compromise. I'm just like, child, I cannot. Like you think she's supposed to be able to set it off on the left, right, front, and back and still be able to effectively do everything else that you want her to do. You need to look at her as more than just a person. I mean, more than just a person. You need to look at her as more than... Basically, he's looking at her like she's just a person and not a partner. Like, he's doing the most. I've been waiting on this part to come on. I'm so glad they finally had this part to come on. I ain't know what to do. Because for me, look here. The person that I am now, when it comes to sex... Oh, yeah, I'm here, with, I'm here for all of that. And I'm pretty sure that if I had somebody... If I had in-house peen, as I want to call it, that person would not be able to handle me. This wouldn't be no situation where they over here begging and pleading for sex because um, my sex drive is out, out of this world. It's, 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 it's doing a lot. <laughs> I'm celibate at the moment. Just for clarification, for those of y'all who might just be peeping in on this video and don't know what's going on, don't know the history, I'm celibate. I ain't out here doing nothing, even though it'd be very tempting. Just saying. But it's just a situation where it's like you need to compromise or get with somebody who has that same type of sex drive that you do. Hopefully they are the one that you're supposed to be married to if you're going to be married. I'm just saying. Whew, child, it's just too much. 
Anyway, thank y'all for tuning in for this recap review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Give this video a thumbs up. What y'all think about this? Let's talk about it down in the comment section. Bye, y'all.